I am officially halfway done, an hour in, and if this doesn't come out perfect, I am deleting my entire YouTube channel. It's Camille and today I'm going to be finger curling my hair and I haven't done it in a long time because it takes forever but today I kind of hate myself so I'm gonna subject myself to that kind of torture for your enjoyment I also feel like it's kind of worth it if you can maintain your hair and the style for a long time because it looks so good but like I said earlier it just takes way too long so far I have a keratin treatment in my hair you guys already know the one and I leave it in for a while so I can help strengthen my hair before I do my full hair care routine and before I start finger curling. So now I'm washing my hair and doing my full hair routine. I made a video breaking down everything I do, every product I use, and why, and I'll link that in the description box down below. And like I showed in that video, I'm ending my hair routine with some finishing oil, and I'm using 100% cold pressed avocado oil, which helps lock in the moisture, keep my hair nice and glossy, and make it easier to finger curl. So I just got out of the shower and this is what my hair looks like right now. It's completely saturated and that's really important. Throughout the whole time that I've been finger curling my hair, one thing I've noticed that's really important is how wet your hair is when you do it because if you let your hair start to dry, it's harder to finger curl and it also doesn't stay as well and I think that's because when your hair starts to dry it just starts going to your normal curl pattern and then you have to fight against it to do the curl with your fingers instead of your real curls so definitely make sure that your hair is nice and saturated and I also really do like to use the oil while I have wet hair because it spreads it out way more easily and then when you're curling you're kind of like smoothing it into the curls so then it's like nice and sleek and I know people like to use gel sometimes with the curly girl method but I prefer not to especially lately like I've done it with gel and without and I feel like gel is kind of drying like I know it works for some people and I'm sure there are gels out there that are really good but I've been working without gel lately and I think when you're finger curling you don't really need gel as much as you would if you're just letting your natural hair curl so I really like this one and I've been using it for a little while it's pretty inexpensive on Amazon it comes with a huge bottle I'll link it in the description box down below but you can use your favorite oil I also like Moroccan oil I love Moroccan oil anything so you have a few options. So one thing I do recommend is sectioning your hair to like kind of just pull it out of the way. So I like to use the little clippies, the little claw clips. I'm gonna section my hair into two sides and it doesn't have to be even at all. Like it literally does not matter. You just need to get the hair out of your way. And this just makes it easier to focus on certain sections without everything getting jumbled up. So I'm just gonna grab a section and then hold this while I take out super, super tiny sections. So each section is going to be like this. That's like 10 hairs. They have to be super little, otherwise it will tangle when you're doing it, which happened to me the first time, actually the first two times I tried to do this. I didn't realize how little the sections had to be for this to work. But if you do large ones, then it's going to come out like a dreadlock, kind of. Like, you have to go way smaller than you would expect. It's probably more like 20 hairs at a time. But it's just like really, really tiny. And that's why it's so annoying to do this. But in my opinion, it's definitely worth it because when you see the final results you're gonna wanna try this. And then when you try it, you're gonna like it and then you're not gonna try it again because it takes so long, unless it's a special occasion. So up close, it just looks like taking a very small section and then you're holding it with your hand and then you're using like one or two fingers to just twirl it around and then pull your hand lower and lower. So now it's a twisted little strand and then you just drop it and you go on to the next one and you only have to twirl it maybe like four, five, six times. Depends on how long your hair is. I would do like four minimum and then once they're twisted, ooh, that one's a little too big. They have to be like super tiny sections, which is so annoying. And I can't stress enough, like the two most important parts are having really wet hair and having really small sections. 
and once you're done you can clearly see which parts have been done it's like kind of stringy and separate so it doesn't clump together like the rest of your hair and that's how you can tell which ones are done it's pretty easy so after my first section is done i'll take it and then use the little clippy and put that over here just so it's out of the way and it doesn't get mixed up with the rest of the hair but it's in a separate clip so it's like holding it away from the unfinished hair and i'm going down the center and i take sections of like one square inch at a time because it's easy to hold in this hand and then grab little pieces so i don't have to just like take a little piece find another piece take another piece this is just something that i've found that speeds up the process so we are all about speed when it's something so meticulous and annoying and normally i would be listening to a podcast right now but you guys can't hear me over a podcast <laughs> or an ebook oh wait that section was too big i've been loving audiobooks lately i listened to like eight audiobooks this month is crazy but the ones that i'm listening to right now are spy books because i love anything about spies it's that series um if i told you i'd have to kill you that one where it's like the girls in that spy boarding school and they're going on missions and all that stuff it's so fun so <laughs> i'd recommend that if you guys are doing this and you need something for your ears to do while your hands are busy and the next thing that I'm going to listen to is the Alex Ryder series because now that I'm on this whole spy thing, I'm totally into it and I probably won't stop until I read every young adult spy novel. And by read, I mean listened to. There we go. Next section. I'm gonna gather all of the finished pieces back to this clip and you don't wanna pull, cause if you pull, it will dry kinda straight. You wanna have a little bit of lax so then it has space to curl. Also, it's really important that your hair is nice and detangled because if you haven't completely detangled it, then this is going to be a nightmare. You're gonna have to be detangling while you're sectioning and while you're twisting. And while you're twisting, you don't want it to be tangled because then it will just tangle it more and it will just be a hot mess. And if you're gonna spend so much time doing something, you don't want it to be a mess when you're finished. Also, another tip that I have is when you pull out the little section, and you do the twist and twist and twist. What I'm also doing is I'm using my two fingers to smooth. So when I'm twisting at every point, I'm pulling it like that. So pinching and then twisting, and I still have contact on here, pull a little bit, twist, and then pull a little bit more, twist, and then you're kind of just like smoothing the whole thing out so that it's perfectly smoothed and everything is even and the same length so then it's going to dry with a smooth perfect curl rather than like a little bit frizzy and i like to make the curls perfect because after that you can manipulate it so i like to have volume in my hair you know just like add those little sprinkles of secrets you always have to put secrets in your hair so you do perfect curls and then you mess it up just a little bit you kind of can tease it out the roots make fun of it the roots will get all big and bothered and i just use my fingers for that because i don't want to actually hurt my hair or cause breakage or do like that whole thing that scene kids used to do and like mess up your hair teasing it like that so <laughs> i just use my hands and like floof it out but i'll show you that at the end when this is done my hair has started drying right here so i'm just gonna go add some more water I usually do end up adding a little bit extra water while I'm doing this because your hair will dry out while you're doing this, especially around the edges because they're not held in with anything else. Like this section, it's just all clumped together so it's all wet and it's retaining that moisture. But this, especially since it's finer hair, is drying out. So that's also another reason to start at the front of your head 
rather than in the back or whatever because that will retain the moisture way more easily and then you don't have to keep going back and forth to the sink and getting your face all wet and ruining your mascara and as you can tell i didn't wear any eyeliner today because i didn't want my water to drip down and ruin it and to make it look like i was crying on camera when i like to cry in secret and not on camera also just flipping the hair over when you're done makes it a lot easier to keep organized instead of having to go back in after and remember which pieces you did. But it doesn't always work, especially on the lower sides. So just make sure that you take advantage of it while you can. That sounds like an advertisement for like a fast food company. It's like, take advantage of it while you can, four for four. <laughs> One other pro tip I have is the most important parts are the T section. So this is something that I noticed when I was struggling with time and doing this a couple different times where I was like, I have to do tiniest little sections for it to look good. But the main part of your face that people see is around here. When your hair dries, you know that's the part that you see at the front. And then this T section or wherever you have your part is the other part that's seen a lot. So I always make sure that this section is perfect and then this section is perfect. And you can do that by making sure that all of your curls are very thin, like very small sections, cause they will dry bigger. And that's the annoying part. But if you focus on those areas, then you are good to go. And for all of you lazies out there, that's a little cheat code that you can have because if you don't have enough time to do everything, you can just do that T-section and then just scrunch the rest and go and no one's gonna know any better unless they come and inspect your hair, which they probably will if you're a YouTuber. You're gonna zoom in on every pixel and be like, that one isn't perfectly curled. I can tell that's your natural curl pattern and that is not finger curled and minus five internet points for you. <laughs> also, if you wanna do a halfway cheat, you can do this T part perfectly and then the back you can take slightly bigger sections and then when it's dry, you can just try and separate it a little bit more, but you still can't get away with taking huge sections. It will just get tangled and look like half dread, half curl. And that is not what we're going for. And you will also be really disappointed in yourself when you go to detangle your hair the next time. And once again, I know all of these things because I've been there, done that, and that's why I make YouTube videos so you guys don't make the same mistakes that I did. Also, I'm doing this all by feel, so watch this. Eyes closed and look at that exactly the same and that's why it's fine to do the back by yourself you can just feel you go to the scalp and you pinch a little tiny section and then you do your thing and then you flip and that's that now i'm going to finish this t section and make it super fine and perfect and then we can move on to the back which is pretty much exactly the same thing. So I kind of already told you guys everything that you need to do, but I'm going to finish doing this on camera just so you guys can watch. Also, my arms are so tired. This is why I have guns. Like, I'm so serious. Like, that's from doing my hair. That's it. That's how you get ripped. That's how you get swole 2020. <laughs> now that this side is done and it's like kind of starting to dry, the next step is to just scrunch it. And this is just gonna help the curls like curl up together. And when you do this, you can start to see the curls and how the ringlets are forming rather than when you're just like twisting it into a strand, you can't really tell but you twisted it into a way that your natural curl pattern, instead of like curling, like whichever way, kind of curling, kind of squiggling, especially at the top, because the top is weighed down, so it kind of like squiggles at the weight and then curls at the bottom. You can see that it's making the whole thing curly and just kind of rerouting the way that your hair naturally curls. 
Also keep in mind that this isn't gonna change your curl pattern. So my hair is gonna dry the same 3B3C. It's just kind of programming which way to curl. So if you have like 3A curls, you're still gonna end up with 3A curls. It's just gonna be more ringlet than like weighed down and squiggly or whatever. Now I'm going to gently gather the hair, just really nice and gentle, and then clip up this side to get it out of the way and lock in that checkpoint. You can probably tell, but this hair has started to dry and that's not okay. So I'm going to be re-wetting this so I can continue on this side. And then I'm just gonna do the exact same thing on this side that I did all over here. And I'm not cheating on this. I am doing every single piece really small and doing every part of my hair equal, just so you guys can see the entire effect. If this was real life and not internet life, I would probably cheat just a little bit on the back, but I'm not cheating today. By the way, one thing that sounds counterintuitive but is actually true is that my hair dries faster when I finger curl, which is crazy because you see that I keep wetting it in order to get it to be smooth and uh, work my finger magic through it. But because I'm sectioning it into smaller pieces, it has more surface area for each curl. And every time I pull it over, it's like, here we go, like lots of surface area and then goes through the wind and then it goes to dry which is a lot faster than when you have your hair that just kind of all clumps together in like the larger pieces. So even though I'm wetting it, it does dry pretty quickly, which I like. And by quickly, I mean maybe four hours rather than seven. We are getting to the home stretch right now. I am so tired. It's been like almost, I feel like it's been so long. I don't even want to say. Actually, let me just check my phone because I started a timer to see how long this takes. It's been almost two hours. That is wild. People will do anything for beauty, clearly. Crazy people. One last thing I thought of that I should mention is that when your hair is wet, it's the most fragile, so it's way more prone to breakage. And since my hair is bleached and dyed, I have to be super careful with what I'm doing. So I make sure that I'm not actually like pulling or tugging on anything. And if I need to separate the curl and there's any sort of tangle, I'll go in really gently and separate it to make sure that I'm not putting any extra strain on anything because your hair will break. That's also part of the reason that it took two hours to do this. And if I had like completely unbleached virgin hair, I would probably be able to go faster and I wouldn't be so, so careful about just making sure that there's no extra tugging or anything. But here we are, that's not true. My hair is green and I know a lot of you guys have also bleached and dyed your hair. So just to make sure to be gentle to avoid more damage. And here is the last chunk. Whenever I'm on my last two of that section, I just double fist it. And look at that, perfect. Now the last part is to take everything down and then flip your head, whip your hair back and forth. Then you wanna scrunch. And this is the satisfying part because all of your work is done and you can see everything is starting to curl up and this is what it ends up looking like while it's starting to dry. It's been almost two hours, so I'm so done with this. I am ready to rest my muscles. <sighs> Such an arm workout. But I will be back once it's all dry and let you guys know what it ends up looking like. So this is what it ended up looking like after it dried. It took five and a half hours to dry and I know because I timed it, because I was curious, but I feel like it does take longer sometimes, so whatever. And that's from when I started doing it. So I was wetting it and twisting for the first two hours. But I really love how it came out and the curls are actually perfect, which is different from when I just let it dry on its own because the top curls are usually like waves and then it curls at the bottom because this part is weighed down by these so it doesn't 
just make that perfect curl. Um, that's pretty much any curly person. So that's why I really like finger curling because it makes the entire thing nice and perfectly coiled. So now the last step is to add volume. And the way I like to do that is I just take some hair and I use my fingers to kind of just add a little bit of volume by combing through just at the roots. And this you can also do with a pick if you want, but I don't like to use a pick on my hair, especially because I like to be as gentle as possible. So this is just gonna kind of like, I guess sort of separate the curls at the root. So instead of it being like a, just a nice little curl, it's gonna be like a little bit like that, if that makes any sense. Um, but it does add volume, so I like to do that to have as big hair as possible. And doing it underneath here is kind of key because that's where you want like most of your hair is like growing out of and you want that part to be big. And then of course I'm doing the top of my head. And then I'm kind of just ignoring this part because I want those curls to look perfect. And then you can also do your edges. I just did like the simplest lay um, but you can do whatever you want, of course, because it's your hair and this is all about self-expression. So whatever kind of edges make you happy. For final touches, I like to flip my hair and then just zhuzh. I believe that's the legal term for this. But also you're kind of not touching the ends, just the roots because you still want these to look perfect. So here's the final volume. I love how this came out looking. It's nice and big. And then from here, you can style it however you want. So if you have bangs, you can leave them down. You could do a little part here. You could do a side part. I tend to like doing a side part. Just kind of manipulate your hair wherever you want it to sit. So this is my go-to look. I like to have a part on the side and then swoop it over. And if I'm feeling very adventurous, I'll part on this side and swoop it over. Um, I also like center parts sometimes. It depends on your hair and your face shape, but I mostly wear it parted on the side. And that's it. This is how I get my perfect finger curls. So I hope you guys found this video helpful. If not, I hope you found it entertaining if you're not going to be sitting down and doing the two hours of curling yourself. Also, if you're looking for a good workout, doing this for two hours definitely <laughs> works your biceps. All of the products I used in this video are linked in the description box down below, as well as all of my other social media. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to my channel and checking out my links down below. I wish you all a happy, healthy life, and I will see you in the next one.